Hey guys, Mark Fresh, ProTech Dog Training. I'm on my way to the client's house to pick up the client and the dog, and we're gonna go work an animal. She's gonna shadow me today, so we're gonna find out how that goes. All things considered, we'll find out. And in Oklahoma weather, man, it's been nice the last couple of days. It's been high 60s, early, low 70s. I wake up this morning, is it in the 40s, but er, uh, so. I'm talking to one of the locals. He says, this is normal for Oklahoma. It go, comes and goes and flip-flops like that on a dime. So I'm just not used to that heavy difference. I hope I can stay healthy. I feel good, but uh, easy to get sick when it flip-flops like this. All right, so this morning I want to do a yak session. I talked about something I kind of ran into this morning. Somebody was <clears throat> talking about his litter of Malinois being little turds, you know, being little uh, high-energy outflow dogs and doing what Malinois do, you know, these little puppies are ripping up his yard and tearing this up, tearing that up, and he, he was making a comment about it, and he's, he's basically, God help the people that get the dogs, but it just made me start thinking, because I really worked hard at making sure that I screened my customers, right, and when I had uh, arrows, litters, and then that, and I got my experience with that, I learned real quick that it's real important to make sure you screen your buyers because if you end up having somebody that's just a pet quality person and you just you need you want to get rid of the dogs and that's all you care about, you'll end up selling those dogs to somebody that has no clue what they're getting into. Okay, and then the other thing is you don't realize that when you start trying to put these pressures on the the possible customer, the person that's looking to buy a Malinois. They will tell you anything they can, and, and the, basically, as you're trying to school them and you're trying to make them realize uh, what they're getting into, they will sit there and nod their head, and they'll say, oh, yeah, not a problem, you know, and they'll tell you everything you want to hear, because all they care about is getting what they want, right? We live in a very materialistic world here in, in uh, the States, and we also live in a very much of a throwaway society, and unfortunately, that's just a fact, okay? People get the dogs, they go a year or so, the dogs grow up and mature, and they're great dealing with their puppies, you know, and they, they, they deal with it then, and then as time goes along, uh, the dog grows into himself and becomes a problem within their lifestyle. They had no clue what they were getting into, and at that point, they end up rehoming the dog or getting rid of the dog, which means the dog is the one that suffers, right? And you're talking high drive dogs, we know what we're getting into. But a lot of times the people are coming at you because of, you know, all the popularity with the breed and Malinois and the movies they're doing and everything. People think they know what they want and they're getting into something they have no clue, right? Hopefully the people that are breeding them that really understand them, like me or uh, this person that posted, I look at him and say he's knowledgeable enough to, to know what he's doing. But it's exploded. Everyone and their brothers, I'm looking at the market and everybody and their brothers breeding them, right? Which means there's a lot of puppies on the market, which means a lot of these puppies will end up going through that transition and at a year, year and a half years of age, as they get a little older, the people get tired of it and then they end up getting rid of the dog and it's not the dog's fault and it irritates me, it frustrates me, makes me mad. I'm doing what I'm doing because I love it, I care about it and I have the qualifications to deal with these dogs and I will imprint them and I'll do everything but I will do my best to screen these dogs and make sure that they're sold to people that are working dog people or people that know what they're getting into, etc. right? If you don't, the only one that's going to suffer is the dog, okay? So just keep that in mind. Very important to realize it's not the dog's fault that man, us, are breeding these dogs and creating something in genetics that ends up being a a problem to society because society can't handle it, right? So in a nutshell, uh, just be aware of that, you know, that it's, the onus goes on you as the breeder and the person that's dealing with these dogs to make sure you do a good job to screen those people that are getting those dogs so that dog doesn't suffer that. And then if you're a good breeder, most breeders are going to take back the animals if there's a problem because they're trying to stand behind their, their bloodlines and they don't want the dogs to suffer, which means you get a kickback. And when that dog gets kicked back, 90% of the time they're screwed up in the head and they've got problems because the person that had them didn't know what was going on, right? And now you got to try to repair that and recover the animal. I've, I've had that happen to me. It doesn't feel good, right? But it, uh, the onus is on us being breeders if we're going to be a, you know, having a litter of puppies and being responsible. Um, it's important that you realize that um, 
it's on you, right? So a lot of people that shouldn't be breeding are breeding. You know, I'm not trying to say that that's the case with this in one individual, but in a nutshell, you know, there's a lot of responsibility that goes into having these kind of dogs. You know, I've just you just saw a little post I did on uh, some genetics of a, a male that I'm going to be breeding my female to, and that's what's on my mind. One, how saturated the market is. Is it going to be easy to get rid of these puppies? You know, and, and I'll be putting the word out and doing my thing. And a lot of times I'll have people that are buyers that'll end up being qualified buyers because I've always been talking about this is what I'm into. Uh, dogs that are working dogs, dogs that are um, heavy, uh, excuse me, customers that are they're heavy into the market as far as being police or uh, heavy working dog people, etc. because that's what I do and most people know that. So my, my posting goes out to those sort of people. So I have a better chance of doing a good job with um, with that than most, but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy because the market is saturated right now, guys. Look at how many people are talking about breeding dogs, you know? I look, I see threads all over the place. So I'm going to tell you right now that the market's probably saturated and these poor dogs are going to be the ones that suffer, you know what I mean? So just keep it in mind that the onus is on you to do the best job you can to make sure you place those dogs and you get those dogs placed and put in the right hands so those dogs do not be the one that, that pays the consequences, right? It's on us. All right, I'll let you guys go. Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off. Have a good day, guys.